Welcome back, everybody! Let's play Klonoa 2, Lunatia's Veil! Ugh, I went on an entire adventure uh, of so software and hardware issues and support forums and tech support. I'm trying to get things to work uh, <laughs> between this episode and the last, after getting a new computer. And, uh, I'm using new capture software. Still using my DASL, but I'm using new capture software and records higher quality, which is awesome. So, what's in here? Welcome to the Kingdom of Sorrow. Alright, so this, is gonna, this episode is just going to be one level. A really friggin' long level. Uh, it's my favorite level in the game, though, without a doubt. I believe we have not missed any, uh... Yeah, we haven't missed any... memory dolls. Huh. <sighs> little else to say or do? Let's go. Probably caused some internal bleeding back there when we bashed you in the stomach like what six times. Don't worry, it's only a hemorrhage. Yeah, whatever you say, girl. Alright. Her sunset's dream. Listen to the music in this place closely. It's some very interesting music. Aside from sounding really nice and atmospheric. You'll hear some familiar tunes. A number of them. Not all of them which not all of them. Or not all of which I actually whoop. Uh hey. Not all of which I actually God. Remember the origin of Oh, this melody right here sounds, like, sounds quite nice as well. Whoops. Haven't played Klonoa in a long time. So I need to get used to things again. And quick, because I'm completing the game. Darn it! Completing the game and playing the super hard level later tonight, too. It's an interesting room. A bedroom of sorts. Dude. There we go. Thankfully, this place is actually pretty easy when it comes to picking up all the dream stones. And there are actually 152 dream stones here, so. Whoa! There we go. <laughs> Sometimes the music changing just seems like it was timed so perfectly, I don't know why. That was Lolo's theme, I, by the way, if you hadn't recognized it. This place does have some tricky platforming, though. Which I have nothing against. It is a very fitting final... ...normal level. Nice and long, although... I think it's a bit longer than it ought to be. To be honest. But I like how I some trickier sections, like this one. This right here is... ...the theme of... Ah, <sighs> Klonoa's grandfather from the first game. I think we missed it earlier. Earlier on, uh, we hear 
the uh, Curse of the Arena battle theme, but in reverse. Hi, Armored Guy. Have you found Armored Giant moves yet? I don't remember. Hi. You can chase me all you want. Actually, I only have one health, so I should probably be running away. I could go behind him if I wanted to. Okay, you go away. I know dreams don't be had from him since he doesn't. Since he can't actually be killed. And here's another one, except with fancy armor. Hi. Soon in Huponia, the Kingdom of Sar, we are still treated to creatures of many varieties. Come on, let me go up. There are also a couple other songs in this, uh, other melodies are here in this song that I don't quite remember the origin of. I knew them at one point, but... Crap. 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 <laughs> You're supposed to jump be from between them. I think I, we're, our, I think what I'm hearing now is like from Coronia in the first game or something like that, I'm not sure. That's the only other place in the Kanoa series I can think of hearing this instrument. Okay, yeah, you leave me alone. Alright, so this part's kind of weird if you like all the dream stones. And you have a mirror fairy. And two giant armored moves. Well, which is double armored. Two giant moves, basically. So basically what you want to do is you want to kill them and pick them up with the uh, mirror fairy active. The recommended way of doing that, I think, is... Crap. What I just did there, except... Actually, like, grabbing... <laughs> the flying moo. Uh, like I said, it's been a long time since I've played this game. It's been, like, at least... Two weeks, two or three weeks. I don't know. Whoa! Hi. Why is there a life here? And there was a life here the first time I came through here, but I had like two lives left, so. Because <laughs> I was dying a lot getting all the dream stones. I dry I died a lot getting those uh dream stones from the mirror fairy right there. Hi. The noises in this song are so peculiar. There's still like an overall melody to it, though, know, aside from the fact that you hear, like, old songs, too. Even some of which are even from different parts of the Klonoa series, which I like a lot. Well, the first Klonoa, that is. Since there weren't, since there aren't actually any other Klonoa console games to derive anything from it. Not, at least not at this point. Whoa! Hi, no enemy. Ah, man, this guy appeared all the way at Crest at the end of uh, the first one of the game, too. I don't know what they're called, but those things that throw things at you. Let's get the decide to wait up until the la very end of the game to actually show their faces. Hi. Nothing to worry about. They just throw stuff at you. There's a song that I should link in the description of the next video. <laughs> For reasons that I will explain later on. Hey, can you? I want you. There you go. God, this guy's such a pain. There you go. The song gets slowly more... Progressively more and more active, too, which I like a lot. This is actually the longest game in the Klonoa soundtrack, too, I believe. Or the Klonoa 2 soundtrack. At something like 8 minutes. Something around there. Go oh, away. I like it a lot, though. I'm not sure. I don't think it's my favorite song in Klonoa 2. Uh, no, it's definitely not my favorite song in Klonoa 2. Okay, this part's frustrating. Ugh. The hit detection for these guys for throwing them is really weird too.
Ha. It's just its own song, yet at the same time. Reminiscent. Oh, come on! Like I said, its hitbox is just... small. Smaller than you'd expect it to be. Frustratingly so. Ugh! Although eventually it does start over. Which makes it kind of sad. I really wish it looped cleanly. Because hearing it start over in the middle of the level is really awkward. Do it. Okay, now I'm just throwing it flying. Like, come on. Ah, bah. I can't resist, like, coming along to this song. You know what? I will resist the urge to do so. Was the worst time to throw that. It took me a while first time through as well, but not this long. Ah. I, I like that they decide to make things challenging in this level, but this part's just annoying. Dude. Not that I'm helping. Thank you. Like my new capture program. My screensaver pops up when it's running. I don't know if it'll actually go to sleep or not if I don't touch it. I don't want it to. Dude. This is, this is, my computer goes to sleep. It's not going to capture anything. Ha! And you want to wait until they stop in front of you. That's really the best time. But even when I do that, sometimes I'll still miss. I get impatient too, naturally. I'm human. Low, low. There we go. Yes. <laughs> you're not gonna have to. You're not going to have to hear much more of that anymore. All right. So this place. This thing is a bit peculiar. It's a nice little puzzle. I like this game's puzzles. Anyways. Oh, go underneath this move. Throw. Jump. There we go. Now, you don't actually have to do exactly what I just did it. What you can actually do is just bounce off of this thing and then throw and catch the uh, floating bobber up here. But, I don't mind doing it my way. Oh god, I don't like this part. It's not actually hard, but it's still kind of nerve wracking. Regardless. You don't really have to worry about dying, it's just... There you go. Uh, I'm just laying back and enjoying the atmosphere in this place. It's very peculiar, all, all the architecture. The mood in general is well done, especially with the music. I like how it's difficult, I like how there are some puzzles and whatnot, how it has platforming that's actually a challenge to some degree or another. That, uh, Teton, by the way, doesn't last very long at all, so just throw it and then grab this thing so it doesn't catch you by surprise and you end up falling and dying. Whenever I see extra lives in a level now, I just assume that's because I'm really low on lives. Because I'm all, I've, at the end of the game, I was always having around, like, three lives left. That's a nice place for a couch, isn't it? But, so I always assume they're, like, pity lives. I, everything's, like, connected. All the pathways and whatnot are connected to the towers really tall towers with cables. Well, that was not good. There you go. Ha! Ah, whoop. I'll still come back at you. Get a projectile, so be careful about that. Oh, wow. I thought that was a uh, pity life too. Apparently not. I was just kind of assuming the worst of the game. And the whole pity life thing is kind of nice though, I guess. Everything's all in towers. 
towers, but rooms, and everything's exposed. I don't know, I should, you could probably figure out some kind of connection to sorrow that this whole thing has. The architecture of this place. I could say something about a sunset, I don't know, I'd go with like the end of something or grief or, I don't know. But I'm not gonna get too deep into that while on camera because I don't think that most of you would be interested in it. Some of you maybe, darn it. But not most of you. But I forgot I had to button match and I was holding the chiton. Ow. And onwards we go. Like, this is like a place that I would want to draw at some point, but I wouldn't know where to start. It's so complex for one, but it's just so... There's so much stuff... Such, such going on, but it's without direction. One doesn't know where to go. You are lost. Looks kind of sure can draw some kind of direction from that, or some kind of uh, meaning from that, but... By the way, that is liquid down there. The only liquid in this entire level, I'm pretty sure, that you can fall into right there. Also, I have no idea why this is like a shiny chiton. This is the shiny variety, is why I decide, but it's just black and, black and yellow. Because that's how it lives its life, don't judge. I've, I've seen no reason for it to be, but whatever. Alright, fun stuff around the double helix. I think I kind of creative though with a lot of the stuff they did here. All the challenges are relatively creative at least. And nothing like shockingly so. But enough to be really fun, I think. And to some degree or another admirable. Enough to make me like places as a level. The atmosphere alone. The association with certain other things wasn't enough already. Okay, dude. Like, that wouldn't even pass for saving my life if I was playing Empire of Dreams. I mean, Empire of Dreams has incredibly... Uh... E lax platforming. Just because of wind bullets work differently in that game. All the weird instruments. Kind of, like, synth noises on it more so, but still. Aha! You will not best me this time, Edix. With a double variety. Was oh, that song I just played, like, the Song of Rebirth from the first game? I think it was. I think it was. I remember that song from the ending. I think it was the ending, at least. Okay, so I don't really remember what you're supposed to do here. I don't think I ever figured out what you're supposed to do here properly. I just did, like... Oh, I missed that. Pitch just did this. I think what I did right there, except you can pick up that blue dream stone. Whoops. With this thing enabled as well. Well, you kill the... Well, you kill the enemy first. You kill it, then activate the mirror fairy, pick stuff up, run up, make sure not to miss a gem, and then run through there. If you hold right the entire time, you'll jump over that one gem that I missed, which makes that area particularly nerve wracking. Speaking of nerve wracking, hey, there's another yellow one. This chiton lasts a really long time, by the way. Man, this part was really, really stressful for me the first time I played through it. I had no lives left. I died, on it, I died on it once or twice, so I had no lives left afterwards. I died on a number of times. Oh, hey, there's more water here. But, uh, I kept getting hit by the spikers for some reason. I don't know why. But it did not feel good. It got to the point where I had one heart left, and I was navigating around there slowly with di great difficulty. I don't know why. I just always sucked using Kaitons. Whoa. Ah. Should not have taken such a risk. 
Yay! I don't remember what I called his grandfather in the first game. It was something odd. It was something odd, and they changed it in the re release, too. For some reason or another. I have absolutely no idea why there's a, uh, kite, or there is a, uh, Teton right there, by the way. There's really no reason to pick it up, as far as I'm aware. Bonk. Alright. With this nice, soft music. That's gonna be it for this episode of Let's Play Clonoa 2 Lunity is Veil. Because. We're almost there. See you guys. Next time is the end.